Hello YouTube. Today, as you've seen from the title, we're going to be talking about Ziz. I've had people for the past two years ask me about my opinion on the guy, and I always refrained from actually sharing it with you. And the reason why is because it was never the right time, and I was reluctant because I didn't feel the need to release that information. But some events and some current uh, evolutions in YouTube fitness have sort of forced my hand and I have to come out and tell you exactly why I think that this was one of the worst things that ever happened to the fitness community. Now, I understand that for some of you, it's not a surprise because you know who I am, but for the others, it might be upsetting to hear and you might even tell me, well, who the fuck are you to tell me that Ziz, who is a massive figure and influence on everyone in YouTube fitness, is problematic or terrible? Who are you? Well, I'm just some guy. I'm not going to pretend that I have superior knowledge, but I have some information and I have some opinions that I want to share because I believe that your love for the guy might be rooted in misinformation and it might be damaging to yourself. So, this is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be talking about Ziz and his influence on our community. So, first and foremost, um, beyond the attacks or critics I'm going to receive from fanboys, I perfectly understand that some people will have balanced responses to offer. If that is the case, please share them in the comments. Never hesitate. I have never in my life deleted a comment and I will never do it. It sort of bores my piss that the dislikes have been discontinued because I would have liked to see the like to dislike ratio to see how many people are still loyal to this to this day on YouTube. But since this is not an option for us, please leave your opinion as harsh as you want to be. Go at it 100%. Just make sure that the bot cannot actually um, censor you. And I will make sure I go into the spam filter and unban your comments and accounts. If you so want to insult me, I have absolutely no problem with that. It is perfectly fine. To me, it is acceptable. As for the timing of this video per se, the reason why I decided to talk about this today is because uh, if you've paid attention, you have noticed that he has made a comeback. Even though he's been dead for a long time, his image and name is everywhere on YouTube these days. And for some people, they see that as a good thing and they rejoice. I see that as a bad thing. I see that as a very negative omen and occurrence. But it's the reason why I'm doing this now, because I know that this video will touch some of the people that consume the Z's related content, which in reality you will see has absolutely nothing to do with Z's. I do that because I think that this content, this type of media they consume is going to damage their psyche and their evolution in the long run. But before I start for real and after also addressing the Z's fanboys, telling them that they're welcome here, but that I hope that they think with their heads and not their hearts, I also must right now establish something, something that might also upset you, but that is absolutely critical for the rest of this expose. And that is the following. I don't give a single fuck that the guy is dead. Just because he quote does not mean that he cannot be critiqued and that he's somehow untouchable, that life doesn't work like that. It's too easy. You cannot do things in your life, then die and be absolved. All right, I don't function like this, and it goes for every single person. If you were a great guy in life, your death doesn't change that. You're still a great guy afterwards, and people can remember you fondly. If you were a terrible influence when you were alive and you die, you are still a terrible influence, and people should be able to call you out on it, even if you're not there to defend yourself. Because even if you were still alive, I would say the same things as I have said about pretty much any and every person in YouTube fitness that I believe hurt others. So if you want to come at me with this type of argument using morals and telling me that I'm a bad person because I'm talking about a guy who's dead, be my guest. I am completely impervious to that. It doesn't work on me. To me, it is a coward's excuse. You have nothing intelligent to add to the discussion. So you resort to an appeal to morals. Well, it is counterproductive and anti-intellectual. Doesn't mean that I have no respect for the dead or the guy. I have the same respect for you, whether you're alive or dead. It doesn't change anything to me. So to open it up, and for the people who maybe don't know who Ziz is, which is strange, 
I'm going to explain to you who that person was and his impact. This is not going to be a character study. It's not going to be me lengthily explaining his life choices because it's already been done by people who have more information than I have. I just want to set the scene. So Ziz was a guy just like you and I who lived in Australia and who was from an immigrant's family just like my own and many people throughout the globe. He had a fairly normal life. He went to school. He had friends. And at some point, he discovered lifting. And after discovering lifting, he also discovered steroids and he started to take them. Before he took them, he was also very active on internet forums, 4chan, but also bodybuilding.com, etc. And he was also active on YouTube. And this is how he became known. He was, in a sense, an internet, inter internet sorry, celebrity. And his area of expertise was fitness. He was a model. He was also a personal trainer, two things that I'm going to talk about later because they're both quite humorous in their own right. In terms of impact, unlike what you might believe, his wasn't so ma massive at the start, meaning that what you see now, the this phenomenon, is 15th time, maybe 100th time more than it used to be back in the days for two reasons. One, YouTube fitness and fitness in general was very niche. It wasn't as big as it is now. And two, the entire myth surrounding Ziz snowballed out of control, according to me. But when it started, it was like a few people. And I can tell you also that when it started, a lot of people were very critical of him and making fun of him. Now, I'll give it to the guy. He didn't mind. He, you know, he took the blows. He dished them right back. But he never had the court following he has now. Meaning that back in the days, people either liked him because they thought he was funny or they disliked him intensely. I was always in the first category because I was there when he first came out. And by came out, I mean became popular. I was around before his death. I was alive and cognizant when Ziz died. I still remember it. Most of you don't. I say that because uh, I have insider's information in a sense. I'm not saying that to, prepare, to present myself as an authority figure and I never talked to Ziz directly or met him, but I have a lot of data about the entire situation that you just don't have because you most likely discovered Ziz in the past five years. So unless you're an old head or you hanged, hung out on 4chan back in the days, maybe you can hang on the same level as, as myself, but for the rest, this is where my info is going to come from. It's from memory. But if you have a problem with that, think back to where your information comes before you attack mine. So that was the impact in general. As I said, you can mention 4chan. 4chan is a place where he was active, actually. And uh, people interacted with him. Some people pretended to be him. That's a different story. And he also had a YouTube. And YouTube is really a place where he exploded in popularity. Again, not when he was alive. His channel exploded afterwards, which is interesting because you see that a lot with artists. They become famous once they're dead and uh, they become recognized and appreciated more once they're not there anymore. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it's because the guy cannot really have an impact on his own image. So the image goes wherever the public wants it to go. I'm going to expand more on that, but it's a very important thing because it's the reason why he has a resurgence nowadays on the platform. In terms of internet culture, he is also widespread. He has become mimified a thousand times by people who don't even know who he is, which is also part of the problem because, as I said, his image escaped his own grasp, but now he's dead. So you have people who reutilizes it and just make whatever they want with his name, which I have no issue with it because, again, I don't really care. The guy is dead. Who cares? But you'll see that what it is being used for might not really be aligned with what he was and who he was. And of course, we can talk about aesthetics. His impact on the world of aesthetics was incredible. And you could even argue, in my opinion, that he is the father of modern aesthetics. Even though he didn't really father the movement in the sense, the, the, term, the sense of paternity, he was what gave the entire genre a boost, a resurgence, in a sense. He was already an actor in that type of revolutionary movement back in the days. And he is to blame or to thank whichever position you stand as for the entire aesthetic culture that we have on YouTube fitness nowadays, because the guy was aesthetic. That was his big selling point. He wanted to look aesthetic. He would pose. 
etc., etc. That was really a large bulk of his identity, is that he looked good. Now, let's get into the controversial topic of his death. I understand and know that he has surviving family, and maybe one of them is going to watch this, maybe Chesbra. I don't really care. Uh, if I hurt your feelings, you should have paid attention to your brother or your son, whoever you're watching right now, back when he was still alive. Because what, what I'm going to say right now about his death is 100% facts, and a thing that people don't want to hear, and that I personally never hear. And that is that he didn't die from a congenital heart disease. That is one of the most disgusting lie I've ever heard in my life. It is so disrespectful towards people who actually are born with disease that they cannot control, who die when they are four years old in an hospital bed from fucking leukemia. Meanwhile, a lot of people still think that his death was a fluke, like it was bad luck. It wasn't bad luck. He didn't die because his heart just gave out. He died because he abused steroids, he abused cutting agents, he had the dietary habits of a complete retard, and he never really rested. This is the perfect combo and cocktail to have a heart attack when you're 22. And finding out afterwards that he had a congenital heart defect that was never diagnosed, that's a little bit too convenient. You, you never ask yourself, how is it that every single bodybuilder that dies of a heart attack had a congenital condition? All of them. So they just so happen to all be unlucky? Or maybe is it the drugs that they take? Because I can tell you one thing right now. If he had never taken drugs, he could still be alive today. There are people with congenital heart defects that are still alive today. You know why they're still alive? Because they didn't take a cocktail of testosterone and cutting agents. I think it's fairly easy to assess, right? So all of that nonsense is again utilized to shame people who want to discuss his negative impact on YouTube fitness because apparently if you say that he died because of his own wrongdoings, then you're an asshole. Well, I will be the asshole then because that's the truth. And the problem is that when you absorb his responsibilities in his own death, you are sending a very reprehensible message to young lifters everywhere. You tell them, hey, whatever happens to you, don't worry, we got you covered. It's not going to be your fault. Because we'll, we'll find some bullshit excuse to explain why it was random and you just couldn't, you couldn't tell it was going to happen. Well, it's untrue. What he did to his body is the direct reason why he died. That is the truth of the matter when it comes to the death of Ziz. And it's, it's so hypocritical because, again, so many YouTubers and so many big bodybuilders end up following in his footsteps and whenever something happens to them, they follow the same, the same principles where they're going to put the blame on something else. Oh, it's my family's condition or oh, I was unlucky, poor me and you were supposed to feel bad. Like every time I see a pro bodybuilder who dies or who's in the hospital and about to die, I feel nothing in my heart. Like, I feel, I feel no kindness, I feel no, I don't feel sorry for them. I think, well, you get what you wanted, right? You took drugs for decades, now you're dead. I mean, is anyone surprised? Why is everyone acting surprised? This is YouTube fitness to a T. We do this when people take drugs, then they die and we're like, oh, he's dead, no. We knew he was dying. We encouraged it by saying, oh, you look amazing. Yeah, he looks amazing in his coffin, I bet. No one wants to talk about that, about the fact that it's the global hypocrisy of YouTube fitness that creates those deaths, that creates those corpses. And to me, it's the reason why, again, this entire Ziz myth surrounding the guy is so damaging. is because it's based on lies. And another lie that needs to be revealed is the idea that Ziz had amazing genetics or he was like a, a, a semi-god. He was big off the drugs. They are all big of the drugs. It's a simple truth also of YouTube fitness because look at what they look like when they're not on drugs. It's very easy to verify. There's plenty of videos of Ziz when he's off cycle. Have you seen the way he looks like? He is small and soft on top of that. Why does no one speak about that? Well, I think I know why. It's because people don't want to damage their glorified image that they have of the guy. But the truth is that when he wasn't on the juice, he didn't even just look average, he looked worse than average. So where are his genetics when he's not pinning? 
Nowhere. Why? Because it was never about genetics, it was about drug use. And it's the same for, again, every single guy. You want another truth and another fact and another proof? Look at Arnold. Look at Arnold when he was off the drugs for his movie career, when he took a year off or two years off. He looked pudgy. He wasn't that bad, he wasn't disgusting looking, but nowhere near natural bodybuilding levels. He looked like a guy who does a few curls, push-ups, and bench press three times a week. That's it. And it's the same with every guy you see that is a massive mountain of muscles. You, you cut away the drug use for three, four months, they shrink back to normal or even mediocre status. That is another truth about this. And the reason why I'm saying that is not to be mean, although I don't, although I don't really care or mind that I'm being mean right now. More importantly, I do that so that I can de-glorify his vision in your eyes. I can bring him back down to human level so you can start to analyze who you actually watch and who you actually idolize. Because at the end of the day, he was in reality just a guy, a guy that didn't know how to train, which was evident for anyone looking at him back then. If you could watch his training videos that are still on his channel, he trained like an idiot like many pro bodybuilders, because they don't really need to train efficiently to look good, they just need drugs. So whatever they do in the gym works. And the problem is that they then have YouTube channels where they tell other people, hey, I'm big and I do this. And people think, hmm, correlation, he does this, he's big, I do this, I'm big. Wrong, because you're missing the most important factor, the drugs. His diet was also shit, which is the reason why he died. It wasn't just congenital. Of course, when you stuff your face with burgers all day, you do no cardio and you take drugs, yeah, your heart is going to have some extra work to do. It has an extra load to carry now. And the problem is that at some point, something snaps because the heart is a muscle and when it's tired, something is bound to happen. Uh, as for his uh, status and to go back a little bit on his history that I'm going to cover more, for the people who don't know, he didn't jump on drugs immediately. I think he lifted naturally for maybe a year, maybe two years stopped, which is, by the way, absolutely nothing in the realm of natural bodybuilding. Two years of lifting, you barely got started. Like, you are, you are at the entry level. But it's something that some of you guys don't want to hear. You think that you're going to be massive in three years. Okay, that's, again, Ziz's fault in a sense, because he was just like you. Within a year, he was already on drugs. And it's interesting because for those who were there back then, he posted on forums like bodybuilding.com asking for advice from people who took drugs. And you know what they told him? To go fuck himself because he was too young. Which shows again that people had more sense back then. Because back then, when a 16-year-old or 17-year-old showed up and said, I want to do juice, people were like, no. No way in hell. You have not even earned it yet, even though no one actually earns drug use. So no, we won't help you. But he was stubborn, so he did his own research, jumped on psycho, and if you could take a look at his first psycho, it was a massive amount of drugs, okay? And then he transformed, because of course, you're going to take enough drugs to turn a horse into an elephant, you are going to look different. And to be honest, he did look good. There are a lot of people that if they take the same amount of drugs as he did, will look like shit. So you can call him an hyper responder if you want, but that is where his physique came from. And so this also means that in total, the amount of time he lived natural was a year, which means something. I know some of you guys look at me like, what does that mean? What's the point to even say that? It means that he had absolutely no idea how to get there naturally. So if you take advice from him, guess what? You will get nowhere because he himself didn't know how to get there. And it's also very damaging for tall guys because he was tall. This was above six feet. And the thing with tall guys is that they have a lot of real estate and to fill out that real estate, it takes a lot of time. But some people like him don't want to wait, so they take drugs and then they pay the price just like him. So this is the entire situation surrounding his natural status for the people who are questioning it. He was very well known for taking drugs and he was also evidently very small when he wasn't on drugs. I highly encourage you to look up pictures of him of the juice. It is quite a sight because he looks like he has never picked up a weight in his life. If we go back even further, what and who was this? Well, this was someone we can all relate to because he was a very skinny kid and he was also very gangly because he was tall. 
And it's something that I can relate to myself because I was exactly like that. I was 110 pounds and I reached six feet. I was a skeleton. The difference is that thankfully I never discovered this when I was so young that I was impressionable. I was already quite skeptical at that age. So he never had that impact on me. However, sadly nowadays, he has that impact on many young kids and I'm afraid that they're going to follow the wrong path. He was also addicted to video games, something he discussed lengthily in his forum post. He would say that he couldn't really talk to girls and girls ignored him and he would go home and play World of Warcraft for nine hours and jerk off on 4chan. He was a loser and it's fine to be a loser. I was a complete loser myself. But you'll see that this is important because his life choices and his developments as a man were all dictated by his past as someone who deeply hated himself. And that left to his eventual demise because the drug use transformed into what many people nowadays would call a chad, right? It's the entire chad meme. And actually, if you look up chad memes, you will see all of them based off of this because a large portion of that alpha masculine portion of the internet, especially from 4chan, has this as that golden central piece of their entire ideology, where he, in their mind, represents the alpha male. He is the hyper masculine Chad that we should all aspire to be. But is he really? When you look at his history and at everything he did, is he really that person? Because if you just looked at the memes, or if you looked at the archives of his footage, or at least the reinterpretations that people have made of it, you would think he was that. You would think he was some sort of demigod coming from the earth to guide us poor mortals. But to me, that's not what I see when I see the guy. What I see when I look at Ziz and his history is someone who had confidence issues, who had no real ability to change himself at least fast enough for his taste, and who tried to run away from his self-hatred by taking drugs. And that, again, was not a very smart choice on his part. And this is not, to me, something that should be replicated, appreciated, admired, or even painted as masculine, because to me, it's the opposite of that. So every time I see someone use him as that portrait and that apex of masculinity, I flinch, I cringe, I recoil because I'm thinking, man, how come this guy that back in my memories was nothing like this, how could he become that? Well, the answer is quite simple and the process is known as mythifi... Of course, I was going to mess it up. Mythification. The mythification of an image of a persona, of this. What does that entail? You take someone and then you apply additional content and information to who they are that wasn't there in the first place. Sometimes to the point where you replace the entirety of their identity with something completely different to turn them into an archetype, also known as a meme. Because archetypes, in a sense, are memes. Memes are modern archetypes. And that is exactly what this is. Because right now, you might not really uh, 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 vibe or resonate with what I say. Because I'm talking about the real Ziz and you're talking about the mythified Ziz. There's a difference between mythification, uh, mythif uh, the mythified, in French we say le temps, le temps mythologique, mythological time and real time. Those are two different timelines. You are on the mythophily, I cannot pronounce that word, okay, I'll, I give up. You are on the meme timeline. I am in the real timeline. I'm talking to you about the guy, the actual man. You're talking to me about the myth. You're talking to me about what he has become. And he has become that because of the internet. The internet made this into what he is today. They took his image and they made whatever they wanted with it. And this wasn't really possible or done back then because he was there. When someone is still alive, you cannot really just take their image and go with it because they are still using their image constantly, so they would immediately contradict it, right? Almost immediately. But now that he's not there anymore, his image is, in a sense, free to be used by anyone. And that is really creating more problems because 99% of what you hear about the guy, all the values that you think he represented, are just fabrications. But not just fabrications, they're actually projections. 
is people taking the way he looked, which is someone who was aesthetic, and they project what they wish they were onto that constantly. And usually these projections come from young teenage males who are just like him, who don't feel confident. And so they present him as an hyper-confident alpha male. It is just, in a sense, their own male power fantasy. And now we should stop and think back about that very concept because male power fantasies are good. They are positive. So why exactly am I talking, am I talking shit about that? Well, the problem you see is when you don't understand the very male power fantasy you're following. If you're following someone that in your mind is someone who carries positive values, but in reality they don't, you are going to run into some problems eventually. So that is, as I said, the separation between the reality and the fabrication. He has become an icon for this very reason. There's an entire generation of lifters that when they think of this, they think of that. They think of the myth. And the memes and the current resurgence of the memes based off of this prove that is that his image can never die because the alpha male archetype that he represents cannot die. But I find it weirdly poetic how his comeback on YouTube fitness could only be accomplished via shorts. I've already made a video about the shorts to explain why they are destroying YouTube fitness and YouTube in general, because they are really the lowest form of entertainment and the lowest form of content possible. They are lazy, very easy to produce, very easy to consume, and repeatedly uh, consumable, which is a terrible thing for people who already have an issue with sticking to things, but I'll come back to that. Have you ever wondered why Ziz was able to make his way back via shorts? Well, it's because it's simple. He lacked substance so much that in reality, he is the perfect attribute to use. He's the perfect image to utilize for memes. And memes fit perfectly with shorts. Because I don't know if you knew that, but Ziz never really spoke to the camera that much. He was mostly a guy of action, meaning that most of his videos were him doing something. He barely spoke. And that is great for the people who utilize his image because he had no personality to speak of. Which is funny because people, when they think of this again, they think of a guy with like that vibrant personality, but thinking back, that's not what he was. Most people saw him as a, not weird, but detached dude. He was a little bit like that guy from Fight Club, um, Tyler Durden, I think. He wasn't that extravagant Chad that people present him as. He was mostly on the down low. And his few outbursts of extravagance were mostly, as I said, movements. It wasn't really verbal. So that led to all of these memes we have to deal with nowadays that I get bombarded with, even though I never click on it, that are incredibly popular and bringing, bringing him back to the forefront. It's an issue because the source material in itself is bad. I would have no problems if he made a comeback, if he was a good role model, but he's the exact opposite of that. He wasn't an example to follow, and it still amazes me that there are people who don't quite understand that. And also the fact that he's being presented as that masculine icon. Again, I don't get it. Is this what you guys think masculinity is? to take drugs and to just live the YOLO lifestyle. To me, that's, it's, it's the exact opposite of that. But it's really telling because, again, masculinity is formed through male power fantasies, which are cultural standards. So cultural standards can shift. And I have noticed, in a sense, that they have shifted because when I look at YouTube fitness and what YouTube fitness has to offer in terms of masculine standards and archetypes, I don't recognize myself. I don't see what I respect. I see something completely different and opposed that somehow is extremely popular with the younger generation. And to me, it's a problem because you are being led astray. This was everything you don't want to be. He was impatient. He didn't really like hard work. He was known to be quite lazy. He couldn't stick to a diet to save his life. He was a drug addict, which, hello, since when do we glorify that? Since when is it a good thing to inject steroids and die young? Who put that notion in your head that you're going to then go out and glorify someone who is the blatant example of that type of degenerate lifestyle? Honestly, but it's not just him. How many drug users on this platform end up having a cult following? 
You are a part of a deaf court. Your leader is a deaf courtist and he's going to lead you to doomsday with him because he's going to die of, a, of an early heart attack or whatever at some point and you follow him in his footsteps. So you're going to be next. He was also stupid. For the Ziz fanboys, I know at this point you already most likely quit the video because you couldn't take it. Ziz wasn't smart. You could really tell with the way he spoke, the way he wrote, he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Maybe it's why you can resonate with him because he's not intimidating in that aspect. Like he has some traits that you see yourself acquiring at some point, you see them as achievable. And since he's at the same level of intellect as you, he's like your kin, but that shouldn't be a good thing. A male power fantasy should be someone who's above you both physically and intellectually. So why did you select that guy? He was a man child. He was a toddler in his head. He was not what you think he is, which is interesting too, because at no point in any of his memes is he represented as anything remotely approaching an intellectual. So at least these people got that right. What made him stood out is his physique and his physique alone. And internet did the rest because this could be anyone in reality. You could replace this with any aesthetic bra and it would have done the job. People present him as that special personality. Again, he had almost no personality to speak of. You created that personality. So in reality, you are special in your own head. What you made of him is special. The image of this is special, but not who he was. Absolutely never who he was. And that's another, another distinction. Again, I know I'm hopping on that, but it's important because if you don't get that, you won't understand the video. This, the mythified version of this, might have attracted some people towards lifting and they might have had a good impact on their life. But the actual Ziz himself is a horrible role model. And the problem is that if you discover him through memes or shorts, you are going to eventually come down a rabbit hole of aesthetics that is going to lead to your demise that I'm going to describe afterwards. And this is really interesting because in reality, if you look at Ziz, whatever you think he was, he wasn't. Anything that you, you, project, uh, you project onto the guy, any value that you wished he had so that you could aspire to, he didn't have. He wasn't big, because again, I explained the drug use was the reason he was, why he was big. He wasn't extroverted. I don't know where this came from, but from what we know, he was shy as a kid, and he was a shy guy for the rest of his life. You can argue that he took drugs because of that, because the drugs made him much more outgoing as androgenic drugs tend to do because they make you more confident and aggressive. But he himself wasn't that. The drugs were that. And that's different. It, it's like people who take drugs and they claim it's genetics. No, it's the drugs. Your genetics come into the form of a vial. His confidence came into the form of a vial. You took that away. He was extremely shy. And that leads also to the idea that he was good with girls, which is a topic I'm going to come back to because it's pretty primal and central to the entire Ziz discussion. Many people idolized him because he saw him as a poon slayer, like a lady killer. He wasn't that. I don't know why you thought he was that. I, I know, I think I, I say that I know why it's because his entire history was greatly exaggerated. And I remember reading somewhere that people counted the amount of girls that he had apparently fucked. First off, really strange that you're spending your free time counting the conquests of another man. That is a level of worship that is quite advanced. And two, these numbers were always inflated. Like every time a Ziz fanboy would see Ziz with a girl, they would count that as a one. Like you saw your God in vicinity of a woman. So that said, he bagged her. That's how far you're willing to go in your glorification of the guy. And on top of that, from him, again, that's from him, he himself said that he was really shy with women and he had a tough time approaching them. And it's the reason why he did all of his antics and party drugs, because yes, we're dealing with someone who took hard drugs via steroids, but not just that. He was known to take MDMA, amphetamines, etc., etc. There are some rumors, and I'm not going to entertain them, but they are out there, of him even taking heroin. So the guy was a, an all-out junkie and any confidence you saw was him on party drugs. Is that what you want to be? Do you want to only be confident when you're completely jacked out of your mind on drugs? If you answer yes, close the video. 
Your life has already been decided for you and it's not going to go anywhere good. So that was for all of the things people thought he were because he is in reality a fantasy. He is a creation of a global group of people who had what can only be described as a collective hallucination. You imagined him. He lived through you as you live through him. The image of this that is propagated nowadays is the result of that. And it's a process I've observed throughout the years. I, I still remember what he was. Then he died. And then every year, his image would change. It would be amplified. It would be a little bit more grandiose, a little bit more flair, to the point where now he's like the pimp of the universe. And I'm sitting there like, hmm, funny, I don't remember him as that. What did you guys do to this? Because at the end of the day, you can attack me on the basis of me being disrespectful. You're the one playing with his corpse. You're the one playing with his image and making, it, making him do whatever you want him to do. You are desecrating the ghost and the memory of Ziz. I'm not. I'm just telling you exactly how it was. And the reason why you're doing that is because you are in a parasocial relationship with Ziz. I'm not going to expand on the topic of parasocial relationships. I have made a lengthy video on the topic in the description, but that's exactly that. And you know what's fucked up? You are in a parasocial relationship with a guy who's dead. And I have a theory on as to why. I think, for the people who have watched Hunter x Hunter, you will get the reference. It's like Nen. I think that parasocial relationships get stronger when the person dies. They reinforce themselves. And every single year afterwards, it keeps going. Why? Because again, the person is dead. So the only thing left is the image and idea of the person that people are free to manipulate. And it always explodes in size and scale. That's exactly what happened to you. And this correlates directly with the problem with parasocial relationships, which is that every single time, it's a strong individuality that gives birth to collectivism, just like this, you see this as that one strong individual, so you copy him, you want to be like him, and you're just like the next guy who does the same thing, so you're not an individual, congratulations, you're just a part of the group, you are just a clone, you're just another one in the mass, and that's what happens every single time, which is especially funny here, because the individuality you're basing your own identity off of is an imaginated, it's an imaginated version of what he was. This is how far the entire thing goes. Because to me, and this is my assessment, you can tell me that I'm just a hamster psychologist, that's fine. He was someone who was desperately trying to be someone he wasn't, and he refused to work for it. I think that he was always the same small and shy guy inside, but he thought that if he projected something else, then it would change his life. And in a sense, it worked because it ch it's changed the way people looked at him, but not the way he looked at himself. And there is a lesson in that. What he did, you could do as well. In the sense that you could fall into the trap of thinking that the way you perceive yourself and your self-love exists in the eyes of others. Plot twist. It doesn't. Self-love. It's inside. You need to work on the inside. This is why lifting is so great. You change who you are outside. It allows you to match who you are inside. And now you can love both. But if you just change the outside without any inside work, guess what? It'll make it worse because now there's a mismatch between how you feel and how you look. And that, to me, is what happened to the guy. He tried what many people tried, which is running away from his problems without working for it. The only way to change who you are is to work. You ever seen that picture of the guy who's like scorting himself? The only way to change is to suffer because you're both the creator and the statue at the same time. He tried to bypass that. He tried to just skip all of the hard work, take drugs, and thought it was going to solve everything. It solved nothing. He was still, I believe, inside as desperate and as low on himself that he was when he was young. And that is extremely common with drug users, by the way. Which leads also to some more hypocrisy on the part of his fanboys because... A lot of them will tell you that, you know, Ziz was big, he was massive, and 
if you don't like you, you need to be Myron and if you don't follow his way you're going to be forever small he was forever small he never grew his body might have grown from the drugs but he himself as a person never grew and now he can't do it because he's dead so he is quite literally forever small and nef nothing is ever going to change that That ties to his very famous catchphrase, which is, we're all going to make it. This, to me, encapsulates the entire irony of the, of the situation because he didn't make it. He died. And if you tell me that he made it, then you're telling me that dying of heart attack at 22 is making it. In which case, you need to check yourself into the nearest psych yard because you are fucked up in the head. You are part of the live fast, live young, live free generation that is going to just sabotage their existence because you have started to believe that you, you want to accumulate as much fun and pleasure as fast as possible. And then if you die young, it's fine. But the length of your life, if, if ran properly, could be an endless accumulation of joy instead of trying to cram it all within 20 years and then dying miserably afterwards. This is not the way to go. And I, I don't know what more I can say about it to convince you, but we are all going to make it yes if we don't follow into these footsteps. I think that's fairly obvious. And this leads to an interesting uh, discussion as well. A question that someone uh, preemptively asked, maybe they have future sight, a week ago, they told me, hey, NH, I'm pretty sure you hate this, which is not true. I don't hate him. I dislike his his influence and impact. But why do you love Rich? Because a week ago, I made a video called I Miss Rich because I miss Rich Piana. And that person was like, well, aren't they the same person? And that to me shows that most people who follow celebrities on YouTube fitness don't think. They don't analyze the person they're watching. They just take whatever emotion comes their way and they never actually run it through their reasoning skills. If you tell me that Ziz was like Rich Piana, then you are deluded because these two couldn't be more opposed. If you look at them, yes, they had a similar lifestyle. Yes, they were on drugs. Yes, they had similar catchphrases because Ziz had, we're all going to make it. Rich had, one day you may. But if you look at the people, the characters inside, you cannot sit there with a straight face and tell me that Ziz and Rich are the same. They're completely different. Look at Rich. Can you tell me, honestly, that there is anyone on earth that looked at Rich and thought, hmm, I want to be like him. I want to live just like him. No one. Zero. It never happened. Do you often see people on YouTube Fitness covered with tattoos, with sinful in their biceps, eating Ben and Jerry's 15 times a day? No. Why? Because, it's, uh, it's, because Rich was never in the business of creating copycats. He never tried to make people live like him. If anything, he was opposed to it. He would tell us all the time, hey, I'm dying, guys. I'm taking drugs. It's not good. I'm going to die. And he did. This is why I respect him. He knew where he was going. Ziz, I guarantee you, had absolutely no clue he was going to die an early death. When he had his heart attack in that sauna in Thailand or whatever the fuck, do you think he had like a realization of the shitty way he led his life? Do you think that maybe in the instant where he felt his heart cramp, maybe he had regrets and thought, fuck, I messed up. This is it. I'm 22. I'm too young to die. But I'm dying right now because I've been a dumb fuck for the entirety of my life. I'm sure and certain that that happened. With Rich, he knew. And he died and wasn't happy about that, I'm certain, but he still knew and he had the decency to share it with us. And that leads also to different results because I would put money on the fact that Rich did a ton against steroid use. He was a very strong voice against the use of anabolic drugs. He was doing prevention. Ziz wasn't doing prevention. Ziz was sitting in front of his camp saying, oh, you want to be shredded, brah? Just take clean butyrol, brah. Oh, it's totally going to fuck up your heart and you're going to die very soon, but at least we'll have a six pack. Great advice, genius. Because again, a lot of the kids, and I knew some who back in the days from these forums, from YouTube Fitness, took clean while following his advice. His super smart advice of taking, just to take two vials a day, it's not bad for you. 
It's a drug that we give to pregnant horses to open up their lungs. How do you think it's not going to have an impact on you and your heart? You don't. You complete idiot. Of course it has. How many kids are still dealing with heart problems down the line because of that? Too many to count because they took advice from a guy who had no idea what he was taking and the actual effects of it. And then he croaked and the people that followed his advice are going to follow suit. So never tell me that rich was like this. They were completely separate entities. One is respectable. The other one simply isn't. And so because Rich was trying to advocate people against living like he did and this didn't, we see the result. We see millions of these copycats. You cannot tell me otherwise. There are channels named after him. There are entire groups and movements that still follow him to this day. Like he's their messiah. They're still there. They worship him. They drink his stupid pre-workout that also had an impact on his health and his heart condition because it was laced with amphetamine. For all of the people back in the days, remember that, the jacked 3D that he was shilling non-stop to get a, amazing workouts, bro. Yeah, amazing workouts. Look at what is in the product. It's fucking up your heart. But it's, it's no surprise that he was promoting that type of product. He had no regard for his health. So, of course, he had no regards for your health as well. He would promote whatever the fuck because he had no idea what was in it. And you know what's so funny with them too? And that goes for the entire generation aesthetics, all of these people that worship him. They're all small. Every single one of them is small. They're not even close to being as big as this himself. That should be a clear sign that there is a disconnection between their role model and themselves. You look after the guy. You've been following him for years, yet you're nowhere near his physique. Don't you have any questions? Don't you think it's a little bit suspicious? To me, it is. But when you tell that to these guys, they're going to just retreat back and say, well, this was big. He might be big, but you're not. I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to the aesthetic Zs fanboy that still weighs 145 pounds after four years of lifting to keep your four, your four pack or six pack, but you have no muscle to speak of. Why are you still in that purgatory? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because you are in love with Ziz. So you cannot leave because leaving would be betraying his memory. Well, I say betray his memory because the only thing you're doing right now is you're hurting yourself. And that's what I said also that this resurgence of Ziz on YouTube Fitness is, is really grimy because people are going to discover him they're going to go down that rabbit hole and they're going to be, uh, they're going to be uh, tunneled, not tunneled. They're going to be shuttled. That's not the correct word. They're going to be funneled directly into aesthetics channels that are ran by aesthetic bras that are just copy paths of this. So they're going to give just as bad of advice. Because as I said, this really eroded the entire aesthetic movement which means that people look after him and they copy him in everything he does. Ziz himself created a generation of twigs and people with no muscles. So the people that copy him do the exact same thing. That is the legacy of Ziz. That is the legacy of your muscle god that has been incapable of producing correct physiques because, surprise, surprise, he was incapable of producing a good physique for himself. How exactly is he going to get you there? Well, he can't. It's simple and plain to see. So we're now left with a bunch of kids again, or people who are still kids and children in their heads, who are obsessed with six packs to the point where they're willing to sacrifice everything else and have no muscles and look like a skeleton. But as long as they have the six pack, it's good. I don't know why you thought this was a good idea, but okay. Who develop eating disorders because of that, because they follow the practices of people on drugs, or they try to look as shredded as Ziz. He was shredded because of all of the stuff he was taking to cut fat. You cannot look as big as him without putting on some pounds. It is not physically possible, but you refuse to hear that. So you develop bulimia, you develop anorexia. Again, how many kids have developed severe eating disorders because of him, because of Ziz, because of the image he projected? Too many to count. Same for body image issue. I've spoken about that in the past. Look at body dysmorphia. 
how many people are dysmorphic because of him, because of all of the guys like him who give absolutely unreachable standards for people. Because again, this would have been small for a long time if he stayed natural because he's tall. For you, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to spend years and years to put muscle and weight on your frame. But you're watching a guy who exploded in size in six months and then stayed on drugs because Ziz was very open about that too. He said on the forums, hey, I can't recycle off because I'm losing all of my muscles and it feels like shit. So I'm just going to blast and cruise. Again, great idea. He died at the age of 22. But that, that is a problem. This creates something up there for you when you follow that type of persona. We can also talk about substance abuse because, as I said, with the rich versus Ziz comparison, he has encouraged people to take steroids. And to this day, even though he's dead, you still have people who look at him and think, hmm, I think taking the same drugs he took is a good idea. And you tell me, okay, but they are just stupid. There's tens of thousands of them. So what do we do? We just let all the stupid people die? I mean, I'm cruel and even I won't go that far. Even if I have to call them idiots and retard to their face, I need to tell them that what they're doing is not the proper way to go about life. As for the training plans, it's not even something worth mentioning. Of course, the training plans are bad. And for the fanboys, well, usually when you're that type of personality, when you become mimified and you become an avatar of yourself, the only people who can love you are people who are fanboys because they love the image of a god, of an icon. So that's mostly what is left behind. I don't know many people who actually thought it through that like this. And I know that uh, the vast majority of you are in this case because, as I said, you don't think about the people you follow and who they are and what they represent. So you might be intelligent and like this and even have a fondness for this because you never really thought about its impact. I hope that this video helps you understand. And that is, in a sense, the worst part because... With the fanboys and with the environment changing, because he changed internet fitness culture forever, he left a space to be filled, a space that was quickly invaded by people just like him, which I call the Ziz copycats. And you know exactly who I'm talking about. There is too many to count. And the worst part is that these people somehow managed the Herculean feat of being worse role models than Ziz. It's the reason why I named that video that. It's not really Ziz I have gripes and problems with. It's what he left behind. Especially the people that, again, follow him. That follow his memory. That try to copy his ghost. And that are essentially the legacy that he left us. Because these are a, a bunch of money or fame-hungry little troops that betray the audience at every turn. Now... I named Ziz because he is the archetype of what I'm gunning against. But I'm not going to name these guys because you know who they are. All of the aesthetic channels, all of the aesthetic bras, they're all the same. So they, they don't need a name. They're the Hydra. They're the creature with a thousand heads. And when you cut one, three sprout in their place. So this is what they are. It's that entity that I'm attacking right now. And their tentacular nature because... It is essentially people who have seen this, understood that he has an appeal for the reasons I already explained, because he represents what you think he was and what you believe masculinity should be. So they just tapped into that market because they know it's profitable. So they're there, they're massive, they have hundreds, if not millions of followers, and they are destroying their lives a little bit more every day. And I will tell you that the amount of disdain. The amount of disgust I have for these little cunts is too much to even put into words. But I'm going to try because this is the moment where I really go in. Because these people are responsible for the entire destruction of fitness as we know it. And it's mainly because they are also on drugs. And that is the problem that they are bringing forth with this entire thing. Because and this is a discussion for another day. But the reason why YouTube Fitness went to shit is Nadi or Not videos. 
Okay, I won't expand on that. I will promise you I will make a full expose on that. But why do natty or nots need to exist in the first place? Because there's fake natties. What are fake natties? Them. Those twerps. Those jerk-offs. It's them. They built that. They are the reason why there would be no need for natty or nots without them. So all of the problems stem from them. They are in reality the great entity of chaos that needs to be combated with vigor because, as I said, these people all look and sound the same, which I'm starting to suspect there is a factory somewhere making them. That factory in reality is called the modern wood, but I'm always amazed at, especially their facial uh, similarities, right? They look like brothers. It's like, are your parents cousins? What is going on here? They sound the same. They have all the same personalities because they're clones of this. So there are clones of someone whose personality and individually wasn't that great in the first place, who then got mimified. So they are seeing it through the prism of their own subjectivity because they are just imagining what this was like and they're making a personality and identity out of that. Is it any surprise that they're so boring? To me, none. But because they're copying a formula that functions, they are still extremely popular. And that popularity can also be linked to their drug use because they're massive. And a 17-year-old that is massive is going to have a very easy time attracting an audience of people who are going to want to know his secret. But unlike Ziz, who was, yes, a complete cretin, but at least he was open about his drug use, they're not. They're not open. They lie through their fucking teeth constantly. And I've been seeing that for almost 10 years. Every single time there's that new guy that comes up that's like 16 and the size of a gorilla and who says he's natural. He's been lifting for six months. Of course he's not natural. He's not some special outlier of genetics. He's just a liar, just like all of them. But it blows my mind that still to this day, people don't see it. You have example of these people who have lied for three years come clean and you still for some reason jump on the bandwagon of the next guy who's exactly like him and uses the same lies. You don't even learn from your mistakes. You're still buying their lies. I am tired of people asking me, NH, do you think that he is natty? He's 16 and his bicep is the size of my head. No, of course he's not natty. How about this? I think he, he is trustworthy. No, he's not. You said the same thing about the, the last five guys. When are you going to learn that all they do is lie? It is getting tiring because every new generation falls for the same trap. Can we learn? Male power fantasies are, in a sense, learning. It's a way to achieve knowledge. Can we teach people? Can we tell, hey, this is, I fell into that trap. Please don't fall into that trap. But nope, people just cyclically fall into the same trap. And it's the reason why. As I said, you cut one head of the hydra, three others sprout in its place. These people reproduce at an alarming rate because their business model is solid and the people who follow them, too stupid to see it. Like, honestly, so many of these guys, those aesthetic bras, you never had any questions for their weird fluctuations in physiques? Like, one day you look at the guy, he's a Greek god with shoulders the size of my head, and then three months later, he looks like he works at Hot Topic and you don't have any questions. Like, for example, hey, what happened that you lost 20 pounds of muscle? Bud, why is it just you to switch your diet? You stopped eating yogurt, so you lost all of that muscle. It's so blatant, too, because these guys tend to go on hiatus. Like, I'll post pictures of me shirtless for three months, then nothing for four months. Like for four months, the guy is married to his hoodie. He never takes it off. He always has five layers of clothes, always long fucking, I don't know the name in English, on les, les manches, sleeves. And you don't think that maybe that's suspicious, that maybe there's a problem here, that maybe he's trying to hide something. Like three months ago, he was an alpha, super confident male. And now he looks at the ground when he comes across people, he can't maintain eye, eye contact and he behaves like a virgin. Not that there's anything wrong with being a virgin. And again, you fall for that. That's, that's how credulous you are, that this, this doesn't raise any questions. Well, in that case, you deserve to get fucked over. But this is the entire aesthetic generation and our channels in a nutshell, because they're all like that. And when they get caught, when it really happens, when, when they do get caught, 
they always do the same thing. They fake apologize, they do appeals to emotion while they try to make you feel bad about them lying to you. It works because you're in a past relationship, so you forgive them and then they just go right back to fucking you over. I am amazed at the amount of people who get lied to on this platform and then just go, well, it's fine, he apologized, and then the guy lies to you again a year later and you're like, oh, it's fine, he's sorry, he's not sorry. Being sorry means you stop doing the behavior. The only thing they're doing is they manipulate you because they know that you worship them and because you will not go after your God and against your God, you are going to stay a little sheep and viewer for the rest of your life. Have some self-respect. Someone lies to you on YouTube Fitness about drugs, bounce, stop watching them. But I say that I might as well be pissing in the wind because these people still have massive audiences that somehow will take any abuse thrown their way with a smile because that's life when you're a fucking wimp, I guess. You just let people steamroll right over you. And that goes for all of the Z's fanboys as well. Although, at least, as I said, he was honest. So they get caught, they fake apologize, you forgive them. That is called Stockholm Syndrome. You are in love with your abuser and you cannot leave. I also despise the fact that uh, they have this entire prank culture going on where it's all about, it's a prank, bro. And oh, I was just ironical. Zoomers are going to die of irony. They're going to overdose of irony because they don't know when to stop. So they are losing touch with reality. But these people know how to utilize that trait of yours extremely well which leads to people, again, either so cognitively dissonant that they can't even perceive the truth anymore and get out of these aesthetic channels, or people who feel betrayed because someone lied to them that they trusted, and then they trust no one ever again, not even themselves. So you have a nice mix of 50% 50 fanboys, 50% people who are jaded out of their minds, who think that nothing is achievable naturally, and who will never take advice from anyone ever again on YouTube Fitness. And then you wonder why the standards of natural bodybuilding are going down the drain. Look at the population that is supposed to represent it. It is no fucking wonder. Oh, and the gas gaslighting. I'm not going to go too much into that, but... I'm amazed at the amount of stuff that these people get away with and the size of their lies, but whatever. So this is a problem because just like with this, you are following someone who is a bad role model. The things that these people don't do to you, if I want to list a few, they get you addicted to caffeine via their stupid stimulants and practices because they are incapable of focusing on something if they're not hyped up out of their minds. They sell you shitty programs and diets that don't work. And they'll sell you stupid, overpriced clothes. You know those clothes that they show off on Instagram and they look amazing in them? And then you buy it and you look like shit. You look like a scarecrow and people make fun of you. Yeah, it's because they're on drugs. They fill out all of that, that frame, all of that real estate real nice with their muscles. You have no muscles. You have the muscle mass of a yogurt. So it looks like shit. They know it. They know it. They know it when they take these pictures that they wait, they spend two hours getting a pump and then the perfect angle and then they Photoshop it. But because you're a fanboy, you see that and you think, hmm, if I buy it, I'm going to look just as good because it's the clothes that makes him look good, right? So you buy it. It doesn't work. You get fucked over and they steal your money again and again because you never learn. And already you not learn when a new one of these guys pops out with all of the same traits as guys from the past, you fall from the same trap. You're the equivalent of a bear that steps into a, a, a trap, then wiggles himself out, walks two feet, sees the same trap and steps in it again. At some point, fuck the bear. So that was for the negative traits. But there is worse than that. And uh, I hinted at that with this a little bit, but... What they truly do that is despicable and negative is that they destroy your relationship with yourself. Because you're going to look at the guy, you're going to follow everything he says, and you're going to realize after a year or two that you are nowhere near as big as him. And since you're the same age, which is, which is something that is extremely important for their marketing practices, you are going to eventually start feeling down. You're going to start feeling that there is a problem with you. There is no problem with you. You are just 
fooled. You have been fooled by someone whose entire channel is based off of marketing. Because in reality, all of the aesthetic channels are the same. It's channels focused on vlogs, which are extremely parasocial in nature, that create a bind and a, a link with the subscriber so that you can then sell them things. It's called merchandising, and you fall for it uh, with everything that you have, in a sense. And this creates, as I said, a negative self-image because you are going to be the exact same age as the guy. You're going to train the exact same way, eat the exact same way, take the same pre-workout, have the same supplements, have the same clothes, but you don't even look close what he looks like because you're forgetting the X factor, the drugs. But of course, they will never tell you that. They'll tell you that it's genetics. They look big because of genetics, of course. What is the chance that every single one of these athletic aesthetic channel is some genetic freak? Zero percent. Okay, it is not possible. Their genetics come in the form of a vial. And just like with the comparison of the amount of bodybuilders who somehow have congenital heart disease and who die from it, this one is a false comparison as well. It's a false equivalence. It is simply not true. They are big of the drugs. Don't let them talk you into believing that you're some sort of subhuman with shit genetics. They have the same genetics you have more or less. And if you don't believe me, look at the difference in ranges between someone with low test and high test. Even the, the outlier freak doesn't even come close to what people take on cycles. Meaning that even if they were amazingly gifted in terms of test production, it would never make them look like they look ever. It's impossible. So there might be some secret ingredient they're not sharing with you. Because if they did, you would never buy their products. Because you would understand that the size comes from the drugs. So you would never buy their pre-workout and they would lose money. So they hush, they say nothing. And they are perfectly correct in that assessment because it makes them stupid money. So that's for yourself. That's a relationship with yourself. You're going to constantly ask yourself, how am I not big yet? You're not big because you're following the advice of someone who is essentially an idiot. Now, let's talk about women for a spell because, and that's something that Ziz was especially, uh, especially prone of doing and that his fanboys like to bring up, it was his uh, prowess with the ladies. Okay, let's have a talk, just you and me. Men to men. This entire thing that you have in your head of thinking that if you get big, you'll get girls, and if you get girls, you'll be happy. All of that is a sham. All of that is a lie. I, I know I'm sorry it's heartbreaking because it might be your big dream in life to fuck chicks. It's not going to fulfill you. I speak from experience, okay? And I'm not saying that to flex, because to me, this is not something to be proud of. Promiscuity and engaging in constant hookups with random women might sound good until you actually do it. And this is my problem with this. You are, in a sense, following and copying someone and their personality because you think it's going to get you girls because it got them girls and you thought it made them happy. It doesn't. I'm guaranteeing you that Ziz wasn't happy. As I told you before, he was so shy that for the most part, the only way he could approach women was on MDMA because he just couldn't approach them cold. Do you think that this guy enjoyed all of these relationships? No. He was trying to fill a void in his heart, a void caused by his childhood in a sense because he was, just like many young men, completely unsuccessful with women when he was young because he was small and nerdy and awkward like we all were to an extent or another. But the problem is that many men like that, like myself, try to then compensate by just having random casual sex with people and that leads us nowhere because what we're trying to fix is inside. You can bang as many chicks as you want. You can fuck as much as you want. It's not going to change it. How you feel inside will not change. If anything, you're going to start hating yourself more because you're going to start feeling disgusted about your own self because meaning, meaningless sex is meaningless. It does nothing for you. There's no connection. There's nothing. It damages the man. It damages the woman. I know so many dudes are going to tell you, well, I mean, guys are keys and girls are like locks. So the key goes in the lock and yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, you're wrong across the board. It's bad for the both genders. It's worse for women. It's just as bad for men. Your entire delusion about being an alpha male that just goes from woman to woman is just that, a delusion. Because if you actually lived that life, you would know that it's not sustainable and it's not good for you. And I can tell you one thing. If I could jump in a time machine, find my younger self in my early 20s and kick myself in the face, I would because I was a piece of shit and what I did and the things I did, I regret. If I could go back and not do them, I would. So I beg of you, please think about it. All of your dreams that stem from you being a virgin, most likely, about having all of that casual sex, all of that is just that. It's a dream, but it's not a positive dream. And I can tell you that the people that went through that, just like I did, know that. They could tell you that if they were honest with themselves, but they're not. The happiness is not found there. This is not masculinity. You have a skewed version and vision of what being a man is. And that is mostly because of these guys. Because you're desperate for women and for women's attention because you get none. You see they get plenty and it's a way for them to sell you products because in reality they're selling you success with women. They cannot sell you that. And at the end of the day, even if they could, it would be poisonous. It wouldn't be good for you. It's a topic that I'm going to spend more time on. Maybe I'll go back to that at some point, but this is coming from the heart. Okay, so do with that what you will. Okay, and after this heavy topic, uh, I want to wrap up also by expressing why they're so dangerous. Because one by one, they're not so bad. But the fact that they can congregate with ease is what makes them into a true menace. Because aesthetic channels are big off of collabs. That's what they do a ton. And the problem with a collab is that they expose each other to their audiences Meaning that you get exposed to a plethora of male figures that you see as role models that are all just as bad. It's the issue with Ziz. Ziz by himself wasn't so dangerous, but he gave birth to tons and dozens of clones and copies of him that all heighten the damage that they do to you. And the problem also with them is that unlike Ziz that was a little bit older, they're your age. So you can relate. It's how they get to you. Is because you feel kinship with them. They utilize that. Willingly or not, but at the end of the day, they do. That's why they have massive audiences. Is because they have massive audiences of kids and noobs that don't think for, them, for themselves and want to be like them at all costs. And they have really no idea what the fuck they're doing, by the way. It, it, it's something that must be said, but... Their success rides off of your instincts of the fact that you want girls, you want to be big, etc., which is commendable. But they utilize that because you have no self-control and they, they know they can sell you quick results and quick solutions that, are, that in, or actually don't work. But they themselves don't really know what they're doing with this entire thing. They have no, they have no insight. And I'll get back to the insight part because it's very important. But the reason why you fall for them is, and I've spoken about that with the rich versus this, you follow idiots, right? You constantly think with your heart, with what your heart tells you, I want this, I want that. Think with your brain for a second and analyze things. Because if you don't, you might be one of the lucky ones that just get scammed out of their money and you buy supplements and you waste your time and you become jaded. Or you are going to be one of the unlucky ones that is going to start taking drugs because you're going to figure out that's what they do because you're going to try to be like them all the way. These people create their own misery. They, re they reproduce via parthenogenesis. They create more of themselves. It's like this. A wannabe this creates two wannabe zizes that then makes four, eight, etc., etc. And the cycle is endless. And for every single new one that is created, a large portion of kids get hurt because their audience gets hurt in the meanwhile and within their audience, people also join. Sorry about that. My phone just freaked out for a second. So I hope that uh, the recording wasn't cut, but to finish off with this entire video and topic, this is a cycle that needs breaking, okay? It's a cycle that Ziz initiated, that people propagate by still consuming his image or by trying to copy him, but it needs to be ended because these are actually horrible role models and horrible role models create horrible people that create horrible role models, etc. And 
with their mistakes and with their in reality evil deeds masculinity dies with them because these are not positive masculine role models to follow they are the exact opposite they are anti-masculine everything they follow low self-control no patience the the constant pursuit of pleasure promiscuity degeneracy drug use these are not masculine traits they will not lead you to become the man you want to be. Or if that's what you want to be, you are deluded in what it's going to do to you in the long run. And the final point, and the one that's, that chagrins me the most in reality, is that this aesthetic movement that we're dealing with right now replaced natural bodybuilding. Because in reality, this is what it is. There was a space to be filled and people, for some reason, decided to embrace a shitty, watered-down version of pro-bodybuilding. Because that's what the aesthetic movement is. It's pro-bodybuilding light. So, yes, it's not going to be as damaging that people who straight up follow pro-bodybuilders, but it's just as bad. And when I think about what we could have had, healthy natural bodybuilding, no drug use, proper diets, training for 10 years, solid masculinity, all of that down the drain replaced by an army of these copycats, followed by an army of twigs. It's a sad realization, but it's one that must be made. And I, I made this video now because I see this coming back and I'm thinking, fuck, the situation is already bad enough. If he has another wave of impact, this community is going to die. Like we're going to be wiped off. Natural bodybuilding is hanging on by a, th a thread, by a thread, and it's not represented by these guys. All they do is against natural bodybuilding. When you take drugs and you lie to your audience, you hurt natural bodybuilding. When you sell supplements to a 13-year-old and you say, oh, you'll be big as me, you hurt natural bodybuilding. All of that is, at the end of the day, leading to our inevitable doom, and I want to prevent that with every fiber of my being. And I think, and I'm going to end on that, that with hindsight, every single one of these aesthetic bras, every single one of these Ziz copycats, and Ziz himself would agree with me. Do you think that if I could bring back Ziz right now and I ask him, hey, would you do things differently? Don't you think he would say yes? Or maybe you're so deluded that you think he would say, nah, you mad, brah? I'm a sick cunt. It's fun to die at 22. Fuck no. He would tell me, yes, of course. I would change everything I did so that I can live because it's so obvious. But all of these guys that you follow, all of these young and on drugs are not at that point yet. It will take a heart attack for them to realize and then it'll be too late because they will never learn. They're too young to learn. They're too stupid to understand the mistakes of their own way until they can't back down anymore. That is the problem with drugs. You take them and you think you're fine. Then you're not fine and it's too late. And with mistakes in life, it tends to be like this. Redemption is really tough to come by in this type of situation. So, what I would tell you to do is follow the Ziz that would be there today and not the one that died. Right? Because the one that died, again, died. So you really don't want to follow him as a model. And whatever iteration of his personality you created in your head, even if you think it's positive... It led you down to the path of channel and aesthetics, which is worse than this, even worse than him. So at the end of the day, it's still bad. And for the rare few that have their own understanding of what this is, and you just, you heard, we're all going to make it. And you're like, okay, chief, I'm going to make it. And you left. Good for you. That's not the majority of people. The majority of people got their mind poisoned at some point. And the only way to see through that is to talk about the hypocrisy, which is what I did, so that you can free yourself from fanboyism. The only thing still linking you to this is emotional attachment. And I want to make sure that the new generation of people watching the stupid fucking shorts don't end up emotionally attached to someone who's dead that is going to hurt them in the long run. It's insane that we're in this situation. Insane. And it breaks my ball that I have to make this video. But again, it had to be said. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that my thoughts were clear. 
If you have, you have questions, let me know. If you want to insult me, let it rip. You are free to say whatever you want on this channel at all times because it's the only way where the truth can prevail. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.